Essentially my brief and what I'm keen to talk to you about is what the role of surgery is in melanoma. Um, you know, we hear a lot and I'm sure you all hear a lot in the press about all of these fantastic breakthroughs in melanoma and for good reason, um, as we just heard from Jonathan, melanoma has been a um, disease that for a long time had no effective systemic therapies. But um, for many years, actually, for as long as uh, melanoma has been around, surgery has been uh, the backbone of the treatment for uh, patients with melanoma and for most patients uh, is curative. So what I've put here is a slide showing, this is from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, the incidence of melanoma and the mortality. Um, and as you can see, the incidence is much higher than mortality, thankfully. Um, and that is largely due to surgery. Um, about 90% of patients diagnosed in Australia with melanoma will be cured of their melanoma with surgery. Um, and the way that I'm going to uh, go through and break down uh, this talk is talk through melanoma through progressive stages uh, and how we as surgeons think about uh, the way that we're treating the disease um, and the big questions uh, that exists and how we're going about trying to uh, deal with those. Um, so for any patient who comes along with a primary melanoma, which is how most, most patients with melanoma present, uh, the question which separates out melanoma from other skin cancers is that firstly there's a high risk of recurrence and secondly there's a high risk of spread and so we're interested in predicting um, who those patients are who are likely to recur and spread and most of the uh, predictors are very basic pathological uh, features um, and you know this is one uh, area where I think there is certainly uh, a role for uh, progress because it is amazing in the 21st century that the most accurate predictor of recurrence for a patient with melanoma is that a pathologist takes a ruler and measures how many millimetres deep the melanoma is and the more millimetres it goes the higher the risk. So we just saw all these fantastic uh, pictures about uh, the molecular interaction of T-cells uh, with cancer and meanwhile in the clinic we're using a ruler to measure how many millimetres deep the melanoma goes into the skin. So I think that there's certainly um, room for improvement there. But in any case that is, the, it, that is um, what guides our treatment um, and for most patients the treatment is to just cut out uh, a safety margin of what we call a wide excision around the melanoma. Um, Traditionally, that wide excision has been very wide. Uh, and if you go back to the uh, WHO database of melanomas uh, from the mid 80s, early 90s, about, I think about 80% of the cases in that database had a margin of about five centimeters. So five centimeters of normal skin all the way around the melanoma. So actually I've seen, I mean, I'm pretty young. I, may, I might look, not look very young, but I am <laughs> relatively young. But I have seen a couple of patients who had melanoma uh, you know, in the 80s uh, who have these huge dinner plate skin grafts uh, on their back. So we uh, are, have refined that over the last 30 years with a number of randomised trials comparing various margin widths. First it was two versus five centimetres and then one versus three. And anyway, uh, we still don't really know, know the answer. So we're now uh, trying to get NH and MRC funding to perform the definitive uh, trial for this, comparing one versus two centimetre margins. And most of us think that for most patients with melanoma, a one centimetre margin is probably gonna be enough. Um, but obviously this is something that's very important to prove for sure, because uh, we don't wanna be wrong. Uh, and so it's gonna be a very extensive trial. And I think an important one, because as you can see on the picture on the left, a uh, one centimetre margin is a relatively small amount of skin and in almost everyone can be closed primarily. That is, you just end up with a straight uh, scar, which heals pretty well. A two centimetre margin, this is a picture of someone's back, but in uh, certain areas of the body is obviously uh, cosmetically uh, much more disfiguring. Um, so th I think that this is a very important question in uh, the management of melanoma. The uh, next um, 
thing that I want to talk about is sentinel lymph node biopsy. Uh, so sentinel, I said before that uh, the number of, the depth that a melanoma uh, extends in, into the skin is the most important predictor of outcome in the primary melanoma, but actually an even more important predictor overall is whether or not the melanoma has spread. Um, and for most patients, there's no evidence of clinical spread at the time that they present. Um, but we do know that uh, a variable number, depending on what the primary looks like, will have a very small volume of disease in a lymph gland. So every part of your skin drains to lymph glands. That's the uh, body's way of fighting infection uh, in that part of your skin. And similarly, uh, when cancer spreads, that's where it spreads to. And we have, uh, you know, over the last uh, 20 years or so, developed a technique for identifying the most likely lymph gland to contain the melanoma, to find it, and through a small incision, uh, remove it. Uh, and if the melanoma has spread to the lymph gland, some of you may have had a sentinel node biopsy, um, we are able to stratify the risk of uh, the cancer recurring. So this is a uh, picture of what we call, what's called a SPECT CT, and it's just to highlight how accurately we can identify uh, using some new imaging technology the location of the lymph gland. So um, here is the site of the primary on the back of the neck, and that's been injected with a radioactive tracer. And you can see here the patient has then gone and had a CT scan, and there's two lymph glands that have been identified, one here underneath the ear and one here at the root of the neck. And through um, a very small incision, uh, the lymph gland can be identified and removed. And so who should have a sentinel lymph node biopsy and why? Well, as I mentioned, the status of the node is the most important predictor of outcome for patients with clinically node negative patients. And uh, depending uh, on what the primary melanoma looked like between about 5 and 30% of patients who have the procedure will have a positive node identified. And this is important for risk stratification. It allows decision making. So for you as patients, uh, and certainly when I speak to my patients, it makes a big difference knowing whether your risk of melanoma recurring is 10% or 30% or 20% or 40%. I mean, it's about double for most patients if the lymph gland is involved. It's important as some of these new drugs come into the clinic to stratify patients for clinical trials. So almost so far, the clinical trials that have been open in the adjuvant, as in, in the post-operative setting, have enrolled patients who have a positive sentinel nodes. So it is important uh, to select patients for clinical trials. And uh, undoubtedly, those drugs will come into the clinic um, on a routine basis, and sentinel node positive patients will be uh, used as eligibility criteria. Um, it's important to note that undergoing sentinel node biopsy itself is not, in, in, is not associated with increasing, increased survival compared with not undergoing sentinel node biopsy. Now, that's not at all surprising because most patients who undergo sentinel node biopsy the lymph gland is negative. And you can't make a patient who's got a negative lymph gland live longer with an operation. But that's not the purpose of the procedure. The purpose of the procedure is not to make patients live longer. The purpose of the procedure is to identify the risk that the cancer is going to come back. Uh, and just because a procedure doesn't make you live longer doesn't mean that it has no utility. Um, there is uh, some downside. It is a surgical procedure, and therefore there is morbidity. Any time you take a knife and cut someone, uh, it's obviously worse than not taking a knife and cutting someone. But it is a low risk, low morbidity procedure uh, with a risk of uh, wound infection, seroma, uh, which is fluid accumulating where the lymph gland was removed. And every now and then we have patients develop a mild lymphedema. The other risk of the procedure is that the procedure comes back uh, negative, whereas actually it was the wrong lymph gland that was removed or the pathologist uh, wasn't able to sample the appropriate part of the lymph gland that had the disease and so it was called negative, whereas actually it had been positive. And that happens in about 4% of patients. Um, one of the important roles, I think, of uh, consumers and patients uh, is to, um, to advocate for and to understand
where these sorts of procedures uh, have a utility and I really want to uh, uh, pay a special note to MPA and to Alison and Haley and to Paul White who all uh, made um, um, submissions during the recent guidelines um, process. So at the moment, as Haley mentioned, the um, the guidelines for the NHMRC for uh, treatment for melanoma are being revised. And certainly there is debate amongst different clinicians about what the best treatment is. And it's very important for the doctors and various other uh, health professionals who are making these guidelines to hear from consumers and patients and their families as to what you think is important and what you think are the important factors because often it's hard for us to know exactly what the priorities are without hearing your voice. Uh, and so I would strongly encourage you all uh, as the guideline process continues over the next 12 months to be actively engaged because it was very helpful to hear uh, from the consumer voice in writing the guidelines. So what happens if the sentinel node is positive? Uh, well, traditionally and certainly um, the standard of care is to then go and remove all of the rest of the lymph glands. And uh, for now, I think that will remain standard of care. Uh, but it certainly is something that is a detailed discussion between the patient and the doctor as to the pros and cons of doing that operation. Um, and there is a randomised controlled trial that's completed and the, data, the results should be out in the next couple of years as to whether or not that uh, further surgery is actually required. So we'll just watch this space. What about patients presenting with lymph glands that you can feel? So the patient comes in not with a sentinel node biopsy that's identified the lymph gland but uh, actually has uh, relatively bulky or palpable disease. The important thing here and the important thing in patients with disease that's from this stage forward uh, is getting as much information as possible prior to surgery. Um, and so we talk about staging. Uh, staging is getting all of the scans and things uh, that are required to get to get a feel for what the volume of disease is and what the extent of spread is because you only get one go at starting treatment and jumping in doing an operation uh, earlier than necessary potentially puts patients at uh, risk of having unnecessary surgery or the wrong surgery or insufficient surgery and so one of the things that is often uh, challenging is uh, speaking to patients and saying, you know, your surgery is going to be delayed while we get scan A, B and C. Um, but I think that it's very important to understand why those things are done because it's very easy to say you've got a bulky lymph gland, you need an operation, we're going to do it next week. Um, but it's much more important to make sure that that operation is actually the right operation. Um, and so that's why uh, staging is a very important part of treatment. And then once we do the staging, we identify that actually there isn't any other disease but the disease that was palpable. The treatment is to remove all of those lymph glands. Um, thanks to a big uh, clinical trial uh, that was run out of Australia and actually Professor Henderson, who I think is in the audience and many other uh, attendees at this meeting were uh, key in uh, making this trial happen. We very rarely use radiation anymore after surgery for patients uh, with lymph nodes that are positive because we've shown that it doesn't make patients live any longer. And so uh, I think that it's important to acknowledge that we've actually uh, reduced the amount of treatment that we do for certain patients uh, and that's certainly a good thing. But I think it's important to note that there are few available standard drug therapies and I think this is a major unmet need in the management of melanoma. Uh, I, have a conversa I have conversations with patients all the time where we use a risk calculator and we calculate their risk of recurrence at 50 or 60 percent. Uh, and the unfortunate reality is, is that in the current era, there is no drugs that are available for patients at this particular journey, in, at this particular point in the melanoma journey. And so uh, certainly this is an area where I hope to see big changes in the coming years. But, you know, it is difficult when you sit across the table from someone and say, you've just had a big operation. Unfortunately, your risk of recurrence is 50 or 60 percent and there's nothing that we can do about it right now. Um, so 
local regional disease, uh, this is again a difficult problem and this is what we're tackling with this meeting. Um, about 5% of patients uh, would present with this sort of pattern of recurrence. And this is an area that's uh, hard to know what the best thing to do is um, because often the patients are very well, they're very fit and healthy. Uh, and one of the things that we're grappling with this, at this meeting is you know, which of these multitude of treatments is the best treatment at this point. Uh, is it surgery? Is it uh, what we call a limb infusion where we give chemotherapy into the leg? Is it one of the new injectable uh, treatments? And there are a number. Uh, there's PV10 or Rose Bengal, which we've used quite a bit here at Peter Mac with uh, good efficacy. TVEC, which uh, also we uh, are using. Uh, and uh, Or is it just to say, well, now that your disease has progressed, it's time to start with these new uh, systemic therapies or drug therapies? And the last point that I'll make is, what about surgery for stage four melanoma? Um, so this can be either upfront, as in the patient's never had any drug treatment before, and this used to be used a fair bit, but it's used much less now um, because of the availability, the availability of effective drug treatments. Um, and so it's very s selectively used. Um, but certainly more and more, we're seeing patients, especially with uh, immunotherapy, uh, who receive treatment and then have progression in one spot or in uh, a couple of spots. And this is why, and these patients may well undergo surgery to remove those uh, progressive lesions to allow them to continue their drug treatment. And I think that this really highlights uh, where multidisciplinary care comes in to the treatment of patients. Um, and certainly here at Peter Mac and also at the Austin where I work, uh, we have a very strong multidisciplinary uh, team. Um, all of the complicated patients are discussed. And I think that it is very important for all uh, melanoma patients uh, with uh, at least uh, stage three, for definitely for patients with stage three and four disease, and I would argue for, mo for most melanoma patients to have a multidisciplinary discussion to make sure at any juncture in treatment where there are decisions about what's the best next step uh, that all um, professional, all, all of the modalities are represented and the decision is made as to how to proceed from here. Um, so I think that that's the end of my talk. Uh, so just to uh, summarize what I think are the keys, there is definitely, uh, surgery is a uh, very effective treatment modality for patients, for most patients with melanoma. Um, there are a lot uh, of questions that remain and certainly there is plenty that can be done better. Um, and I think that the surgeon uh, is and remains a key part of the multi, uh, disciplinary uh, treatment team for patients with melanoma. So thanks very much.